selfish, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, and you know, when you're selfish, you cannot be happy because you're an I, me, mine, and then you're singing the song, May the entire year, and then you think, I gotta do this, da 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 No point, you might as well keep quiet and be honest with yourself, you're thinking all those thoughts, you know, this is why you put some emotion in it, so you're forced to focus on the words that you are singing. You know, it's like, I remember as a child, because I went to a Catholic church, and also Hindu temples with my mother, they used to do prayer. It was like, da 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 You know the Satnarayan Puja, right, Gauri, that we do? da 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 No feeling! You know, I go, what's the point to pray? What are you showing people? You know? It's just, yeah, just repeating. Our Father, what an and thinking all awful things in the head. What's the point? So when you're going to pray, like everything else you do, do it, put love into it. Remember, love is the healer. Love is that grace. Today, the, 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 the topic is grace is a gift. That's our gift if we want to receive it. And the only way you can really receive that gift of grace, that feeling of grace, is when you're giving it out yourself. If you're not giving the love out yourself, you cannot receive the grace. You cannot. You, you may think, oh, I'm in grace, I can see vision, I got this. Where are those visions going to take you? The visions are as good as your life here. Where is it going to take you? But when you do it with love, where is that going to take you? At least you leave something behind. And even if you don't believe in another world, that's all you've done, then that something is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Like today, somebody, I met somebody in the bank and questioned me, said, you know, I've been in going to church all my life, I've been doing this, I've sang in choirs, etc. And at my age, he must be about 78 or something, stop me at the bank. And he goes, I still don't know if there is a God. I still don't know. And I said, well, I have complete faith. He said, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have complete faith, because he started to ask me about my husband, how I was doing. And so he said, you must have complete faith. And uh, so I said, but I do. Why was he so confused? I said, why are you so confused? Where's your faith after you've done all these years of going to church and telling me all you've done? Why are you so confused? I was confused why he was confused at his age after serving all his life. And he answered simply, he said, I have to ask the question every day. Do you know how many children die in Africa every 30 seconds? He said, one child in Africa every 30, 30 seconds. That's too a minute, he said to me. How can God do that? And I said, is that God? Is that your version of God? I said, no wonder you're confused. I said, my version of God is love. Then he said, how can you explain all this? I said, you know, why don't you look a little bit at the Eastern traditions and go into karma and reincarnation? And I said, if you don't want to believe in that, just go into as you saw your life. And then he asked me a very, very clever question. I thought it was very clever. He said, why would a good God at the Garden of Eden give us a choice of good and evil? Of course, he knows that the human mind will be corrupted. So why would God do that to us? And I said, then you come to the higher belief, even higher. Really, it's all love and all one, and God just wanted us to enjoy the play. But we forgot that it was a play and we got too involved. It's like you read a good book. Any of you read a good book recently? Hmm? You read a good book, you get into the book, right? 
Now, if you get so involved in the book and you take it through to you, oh, you know, in this book I read this and this happens and people do this in the world and you take it on to yourself, you will suffer. You read a good book, you finish, put it aside, get another good book. Hmm? So life is a good book if we know how to read it well. And grace is that gift that comes with life. And in all the years that I have been finding and searching for God and love, I have realized, really, I can only see this dynamic energy, this great, great energy. This is unconditional love. Hard to find in human life. This is why we struggle so much. Because we look for unconditional love in our partners, in our children, in friends. We're constantly searching for this unconditional love. And every time it evades us, we find, think we find it, and it's gone. We think we find it, and it's gone. Is God punishing us? No. Because the realization is, this unconditional love cannot be limited to one. It is everywhere. And until we see that, we will be always be searching for it outside of ourselves and not in ourselves. Because that's the only way we can see it all as one. Otherwise, we will always separate. Male, female, 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 male, male, whatever you want to look at it. Mother, daughter, father. It's, we'll always search, 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 and look for that unconditional. Why are we searching for that unconditional love? Why, 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 I ask myself. That purity that comes with loving no matter what. Because that's who we are. We want to go back to our source. And when you question all these things and you see all these things, and life teaches you through lots of non-attachment, death, different partnerships, different things, life teaches you, life brings you to a point where you have to look inside yourself and you realize the only way you can ever go to feel it in this world or feel his grace or her grace or its grace, whatever you want to call it, is when you start building up that unconditional love in you. No other way. Only you can build it up in you. And how can you build it up in you? By knowing that unconditional love is not you is greater than you. Your human personality gets in the way, your mind gets in the way, and that's the Garden of Eden. It gets in the way, I want, I need, I have to have. I have to have it my way, otherwise I won't be happy. It gets in the way. And the whole yoga practices is yoga chitta vritti narodha, which means the restraint of the modification of the moans, uh, my, my stuff. stuff is yoga. What happens after you practice yoga? Tada drastue swarupe vastanam. And then the seer abides in its own true nature. What is your own true nature? Again and again, it's truth, satchit ananda. Truth, knowledge, bliss, absolute. How do you know that? Because we're all searching for what? The truth. How does the truth make you feel? Sometimes the truth hurts. It hurts, but I'd much rather have the truth than to live a lie, won't you? Yeah. Because the lie will always be caught up. It will always end up in suffering. Hmm? So the truth, we all know, all of us, deep in us, there's this love for the truth. Isn't it true? And chit, consciousness, knowledge, knowledge. We talked about ignorance yesterday and, they, and last Tuesday in, 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 in satsang because we're covering ignorance. Hmm? When we're in ignorance, we do many things that are really not, don't make us feel good about ourselves. And it makes us uncomfortable or sad. For example, this gentleman that came to me in the bank today. What a good man. But what happened? Not willing to go beyond his borders to find the truth. His soul is telling him, I don't know whether I believe, but I want to believe. I want to believe. I'm desperate to feel it. It's not going beyond the bodice to look for it. Still limiting God to a box and not unconditional love. Still blame, how could God do this to me, to these kids? There's no blame in this equation. Blame comes when there's duality, right, wrong, pleasure, pain. That's all duality, and duality lives in this earth. That's what we're here for. We're in the university to get beyond duality. 
that's our university here in the universe. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy. How can it be filled with peace and joy, love and light? Only if you become each one of us, yeah. each one of us, every single soul. Unless we all become filled with peace and joy, love and light, not going to happen. So you can see, our earth is never going to happen. It will always be a university because everybody is at different grades of growth. Is it bad? Is it good? No, we're just going to school. We need to stop judging and growing. And every time this pain comes up or this you know, anger comes up, good, 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 question it. It's very good for you. You're getting attached again to this world, to this thing, to this one thing or to this, you know. And that causes pain. You're going to love, love unconditionally, give it unconditionally, share unconditionally. And then this grace comes. And what is grace? What is grace? Yeah, acceptance. It's more. It's what? It's more. It's ananda. Bliss. Truth, knowledge, bliss. Absolute. You look at the people who can give grace, or you feel grace. Just look. You feel grace? The light coming from the heart. Do you see it? Grace. If you, any of you, been to uh, Saint Teresa of Avila's home in the north of Spain? Yeah. yeah you came with me, right? Did you? Came. Yeah. And and you know, do you have you seen Cupid hits her heart? In all the paintings, it's Cupid who hits her heart. What is she telling you? What are those paintings telling us? What hit Saint Teresa? Magical feeling, that's grace. That grace. Love with all human beings. Love for all human beings. Love for all things. Animals, trees, plants, material. Respect for all things. And what is a feeling of grace? A feeling of grace is like you've been given a gift. It's a gift. It's a feeling of a gift. It's a feeling of gratitude. When you're in total peace, somebody came to me the other day and said, Oh, you know one thing I like about this practice? I never knew I could come to such a place of peace. He said, for me, is that spiritual? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you couldn't come to a closer version of God. Yeah. <laughs> I said, and you thought it yourself. And you tell me you're not spiritual. And you tell me you don't know anything about God. I said, well, you just found that grace. Said, I never known such peace. All I did is give him some exercises to do. Did them. One week, did them. Did everything I told him to do in one week, got the grace. He said, I never felt such peace. I feel so grateful. I said, it feels so full of love. <laughs> I said, you got it. I said, do you know what my guru said? He said, don't even allow God to take away your peace. Mm -hmm. How many people use God in vain? The Bible says, do not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. in vain. What do most people do? Use God? Oh, you don't do this, live in the fear of God. So, our generation of younger people are mm. lost. Because they know that not to be true. They naturally, children of today, naturally know that they don't like this version of God. So they have no version. So they're lost. So when they have a problem, there's nowhere to go. There's no battery to charge. There's no grace in their lives. So they go all over the place with drugs, trying to find all that time. Oh, drugs, this, that, that, experiment, experiment. What are they looking for? That grace, that love, that, that charge, that charge, what we call the Kundalini charge, which is a spiritual energy that lives at the base of our spine, mm -hmm. which we awaken through the practice of oh, yoga, or oh, yoga meaning, Yoga yeah. meaning very clearly union with your higher self. Every religion has yoga. Everyone should be practicing yoga. If they practice real religion, the maps are all there. Religions are all, all of the religions teach it. 
and people again, again, and again, and again misuse the knowledge. Christ was universal, therefore the name Catholic. So why do some people say this is the only way? Hindu is the same. Oh, if you don't believe in this God, you'll get bad luck in it. Oh my God. And another part, if you don't repeat so many mantras a day, you're in trouble. Everything is built on fear, control, fear, control. And I think this is the age when we have to fight for our grace ourselves. If we don't, we're covered in mud. There's no way out. You look at the news, suffering, suffering, suffering. Somebody told me today they were so frightened yesterday with the fire here. Yeah. 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 Some people were so, so terrified. So petrified, so, yeah, so, so scared. Yeah, people were scared. Where do they go with this fear? But panic, panic is where they go with the fear. But when you have this higher energy of grace, you can get a little detachment, detachment from the pain or the fear. And that's why we said, Sri Patanjali tells us very, 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 very clearly, the way to achieve this state, this unitive state of yoga, is to go a little away from your own ego by detaching from your own emotions, you know, extreme emotions. Balance your emotion. And then when it's quiet, there dawns, there dawns. Oh, it's the light of wisdom. You don't have to do anything. There dawns. Don't try so hard to be holy. You can't. <laughs> it's not something you can try to be. You either are or you're not. What you can try to do is make your mind clean. That's what you can do. You can clean up your act. You can do nice <coughs> deeds. But to try and be, oh, I'm so holy. I do so many mantras. I do this, I do this, I do this. I, 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 I. Did you hear it? I love thy will be done. Thy will be done. Today, I maybe don't do my, many mantras, but oh dear God, just give me one boon, one boon I ask of thee. Make me think of you constantly. I know I'm not there. Make me come there. That's real moment. That's you really praying for it. Accepting what you are, where you are in time, which is acceptance as well. But at the same time, craving for that. Obviously, the reason why you haven't got it yet, some karma you have to go through. Accept. I know this is my karma. Make me brave in this karma. Don't make me complain. Don't let me stress out. Don't let me feel I'm not good enough, full of guilt. Just accept. As I've sown, I'm reaping. Let me just accept this reaping and enjoy it because I know, I know this too shall pass and grace shall come. That pass. When you burn, you become like gold. Mm -hmm. You become like gold after this. Don't run away. They'll come back again and again. Or don't force things to happen. The more you force it to happen, the more it will run away from you, right? Have you noticed in life? The more you want to possess it, it's gone. The less you want it, they'll keep coming. <laughs> and that's the way life works. Why do you think it wants to pick on you? No, for you to grow <laughs> and learn beyond this body because you are not this body. You are not this mind. Do I say it every week? <laughs> over and over. Well, we keep forgetting, don't we? I'm not this body. I'm not this mind. Immortal self I am. I'm not this body. I'm not this mind. Immortal self I am. I, the self, the self, the one that is unconditional, the one that's connected deep in the hearts of all is the light of all light, says the Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? Look at all the say sayings around the room, all based on different religions, all talking about light. The radiance of Buddha shines ceaselessly. And that's why when you're in love, what happens to you? You shine. This is permanent shine. <laughs> you want a permanent shine. You want to be permanent, not partially, because what comes will go. It's life. The other is more permanent. So build up your permanence, and that's grace. Be in constant connection with that source. And to be in constant connection, what do you have to do? The 
practice, like I said, is to purify the mind. And after that, all you have to do is be. One of the practices I told you many, many times is in the beginning I couldn't get into that grace. I couldn't. I couldn't because I was so selfish. How could I even tap it? I could pray hours and hours and meditate, but I couldn't tap that energy. And then I, one of the practices I remember doing, and thanks for starting with that chant because it reminded me, because I've forgotten, is to walk through the streets and bless Every stranger walking down Main Street. I used to work in Main Street, right? 131 Main Street. So from I used to live um Marina Court. Every morning walking to work, I made it a habit. Bless every face. Look at the eyes, look at the mouth, look at the nose. Oh, you're beautiful, God bless you. I had so much fun in my head. I blessed the whole Main Street by the time I got to the shop. Mm -hmm. I was in a great mood. I said, Wow, mm -hmm. this really works. This is a good practice. Why? I'm really looking at each person and really blessing them. And what's happening to me? I'm no longer in the picture. By the time I ended up in my workplace, which is, could be quite stressful, I was full of joy. I was full of joy because I could only love the moment. Such a simple practice. You know, but do it with meaning. Do it with meaning. Do it with, and when you're the most sad, do it. Give it more. The thing is, when we're really sad, we sometimes get the wrong cure. We become a victim. I feel sorry, poor me, why me, why God does this to me. The more the victim you become, the more you suffer. I have noticed also in my hardest times, give thanks and ask for courage to do things. Just ask for courage and give thanks. I've seen it is the best cure. All the others don't work. You know, or you can feel sorry for yourself as much as you want. I'm a good person, why has this happened to me? Doesn't work. Give back in your pain, and you've got a great cure. That's really quite phenomenal. And it brings me back to St. Francis' prayer again and again and again. Do you see how magical he is? What a prayer! Make me a channel of your peace. There is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is anger, need your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Oh, must it be the channel of your peace? Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is sadness,
should ask to be consoled. I should console. And then the medicine works. It's medicine. It's the best medication you can have. And I know it works and I've seen people try this and it works it was this like this person I saw the other week and I just gave them these things to do for one week. Really take him away from I, me and mine. <laughs> really that's all I was doing to thinking more about what about the members of your family and what about this and how many people are you affecting. And one week of doing that, because he did it, plus the physical exercise, the movement of the body, which is really important these days. We don't move enough too much into computers. Our bodies are not responding well. You know, in, in order to be feel grace as a gift, you really need to look at your whole body, mind, and spirit. You can't separate them. You must look after all three, and we suffer tremendously when we, you know, sit in, in front of computers all day. And we don't have the strength anymore to fix the mind. And then we don't have the strength anymore to fix your spirit. So it's really important to walk, walk. Like I always say, walk, move. And if you can't go to the gym, I know I'm not, like don't overwork yourself, please, because what you overuse, you will also lose. <laughs> Some people get fanatical, take all this stuff to get muscles and all that, go to the gym two, three hours. I mean. Again, something will break. What do I always say? When you take an elastic band, you keep stretching it and overstretching it, what will happen? One day it's going to snap. So do enough. Balance. Enough, not too much. Not too little, not too much. And don't become fanatical in anything. The moment you see yourself fanatical with food, with gym, with spirituality, oh my God, no, you've lost it. <laughs> do, you, do you have to think about your body as well? You can as well. Oh, thank you for laughing. I like to see people laugh. It makes me happy. I get so happy when I see people laugh. I think this is so. This is our play, and this is the gift. This is the grace. I love what Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna, said. He said, "The the winds of grace are always blowing. The winds of grace are always blowing." All you have to do is raise your sails high enough <laughs> to catch the wind and blow with it. So we have to raise our sails. What are our sails? Our nature, part of ourselves that we like and respect and love. We need to raise those aspects of ourselves to the high winds so we can flow. And what is our highest nature? And we like ourselves when we, you sing St. Francis's prayer, you know, get Shanti to teach it to you, or whoever knows the words, we have it in our Kirtan booklet, get it on the, um, your iTouch or your iPod. It's who sings it? Sinead O'Connor. She sings a beautiful version of this. So will you look her up? Go into your computers, put it on your iTouch. Listen, listen, listen. After a while, that's your practice. This week's practice. Can I give you homework? <laughs> can you do that? Are you all good? Computer savvy, you can do that. You can find it. Otherwise, just type out the uh, poem from the Kirtan book. Borrow the Kirtan book for a week. Yeah? And if you don't return it, it's your karma. So. <laughs> 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 But don't you know they face their karma every time they see a library book that belongs to oh, Yoga yeah. Center? They feel the guilt, so they don't return it. Better to return it than stop feeling the guilt. Many people do that. Yes. Well, yes. Yes. And they don't return it because they don't want to be reminded. So that's their karma. They're facing that guilt every time. Why would you want it? I'd rather return it. Say, sorry, I kept it for two years. <laughs> <laughs> I can not take anything of somebody that doesn't, you know, I see it once and sometimes people let me think I'm so busy. Like the other day I saw a book, I still have your Grace Gaia book that I owe you, which I gave you when you left in my car. I get back to her and she returns, she leaves it in my car. Doesn't want to leave you. You know, there's sometimes, you know, these books that people let 
lend me, then I go, I have to return it because, you know, it's not mine. So why would you want that extra thought in your mind? Hmm? Why do you want that extra? It, it stops the stone. Can you imagine one book to stop the stone? It was so crazy. And the mind can be so still. Everything paid back, nothing owed. Hmm? Isn't that nice? Happy mm -hmm. out. Clear mind. Very clear. I can't afford it. I won't get it. I just won't get it. Clear. No debts in the bank. Oh my god, I owe 10,000 bones if I could pay it. <gasps> Strangulation. Who's that? Did God do it? Did God, God go and do all the shopping for you? <laughs> Who did the shopping? The you enjoyed it? Yeah. <laughs> you did the shopping, please. God did the shopping. Tool cover and take a nail 
and you'll take the right nail, the right one for the job, and you'll take a hammer and you'll use it. Then what happens? Put it back there. So don't you think, you know, you want, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want, I want, I want. Again, it's tension. Don't you think that if you just stay quiet and peaceful when you're needed, God will use you. And then you stay peaceful. God will you. He'll call you. You don't have a choice. I guarantee you that's grace. You'll be called. And then you say, can you please don't call me so much? <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I need a break. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for, you might yes. get it. Be careful with yes, yes, exactly. Be careful what you ask for. You just get it. You've been called and called and called and called. Your line's open, you see. So um, you just have to be ready, 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 ready. And how do you become ready? Just fill your day with love. If you just fill it with love, things come to you. It's like magic. It really is, right? It's just magic. It's a whole day will become magical. Because you fill it with love, right? I mean, it was a magical day, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to see things Yeah, yeah. The other day we went to see a lawyer to, to set up the SIS in, in Spain. And um, stranger, stranger, stranger doesn't want to charge us. Now he wow. asked us if, he, if we want, and he asked us if we want to be only, uh, you know, Cadiz, Malaga, or national Spain. We said, our charity we want to be national Spain because we have people in Barcelona who helps us raise money and maybe even sometimes Madrid and who knows it might grow. Oh, so his junior lawyer says, Oh, well, in that case, I'll go to Madrid next week. Right <laughs> next week, she said, I'll go right next week and you'll have your charity in two months. Never seen yeah. it was so fish. So I ask, uh, We'll pay for your flight. No, 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 no. My boss says he's paying for everything. <laughs> wow. Taxes, everything, taxes, taxes registration, everything. Mm. A stranger. And he's giving us a donation. And oh On yes, top. and he wants to give us a donation. <laughs> <laughs> what did you tell him, Nathalie? What nationality is he now? Spanish. He's yeah. one of it's the top fate. Spanish lawyers in wow. in in, in Malaga. And John Bird are both saying that they're really pleased that it's come to them because it gives them a chance, an opportunity to do something different and to give back wow. in a different way. Right. They're thanking yeah. us. On top they're thanking us. us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And this is, a, this is not even somebody you know who I've talked to for years or talked for years. Or, this is a total stranger recommended to me by my lawyer saying he's really, 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 really busy. He's one of the top ten lawyers. But try him. I'll call him and let him know you're coming. <laughs> And look what we got in return. So that's the winds, wings of grace. Do I have anything to do with it? I think God sent because this project has to go through. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with me. Just using me. Call Amber. Comes in a time when I need a lawyer. Perfect time. She goes, oh, I said, can you help me on this day? I really would love a lawyer present with me. She happens to be on holiday on that day and comes. I mean, and then from, and I find I couldn't have done without her expertise. So she gives her time free as well. And I go, this is really magical. The tools I used when I made it, they had graced these people. And I had nothing to do with just called me to set up this charity service in such a manner. The rest is like magic. I think every time, you know, I just see each day and I see, this is so magical. You know, how can anybody say there is not grace? But it happens when you, I have seen, when I'm not in me, when I'm not concern Melanie mm. mode. I mean, I get Melanie mode and I can go quite funny too. <laughs> <laughs> and I accept that. I really accept myself for being silly sometimes. But that's who I am. That's my human personality. But when I forget about human personality and I'm in touch with my yoga, my divine personality, that's not me really, because the strength doesn't come from, I, I really know that comes from beyond me, then things get done, like by on its own. On its own, it just gets done. And that's when you feel the wings of grace. Like Sri Ramakrishna says, that's when you fly. That's when you sh your, your ship sails. It sails. Because there's no personal I, there's no personal gain. You know? And the two of us, sometimes with us, even wherever we travel, we see it all the time. 
I love to tell the story. The well, first time we went to Madrid to surf, you were there too. Nine of us went there. Surya was there too. Went to Madrid, we were asked to surf there. Many things went wrong, right? <laughs> Remember. But it doesn't matter. We didn't mind. We just accept. We laugh. We sing. And then, uh, you know, I was thinking after we had lunch in this restaurant, and I go, I, go, I really would like to buy everybody just. Everybody was looking at the cookies. I don't really like cookies, but everybody else in our team did. Oh, they looked delicious, and they left the restaurant when we finished. And I go, I really would love to buy everybody a cookie. So I said, I'm just coming back. So I go to the lady in the, the restaurant, there was a little cookie place. And I go, look, can you give me nine of these big cookies? And so she puts it in the box for me and said, how much are pay? Can I, how much is it? She says, nothing. I said, this is a restaurant. <laughs> She doesn't know me from Adam. What put it in her head to give me nine cookies free? <laughs> One euro each or something like that. Why would she give me nine euros free? But you know, and I laugh and I say, okay, God, you're playing your tricks on me again. Just reminding me you're around. Mm -hmm. Do you know? And like that, and like that, I seen it happen. You know. Uh, and another trip, we go to Barcelona. We meet one of our Andrew's relatives in Madrid and gives her a nice silver bowl as a gift. We go to Barcelona, somebody wants initiation, they have nothing in the center. Nothing, nothing to put out prayers or chocolates to give everyone. Um, so Andrew goes, I got the perfect thing, the silver bowl. Isn't it, isn't it incredible how we need it? It just comes. And she just realized it came, so she just gave it. There was no attachment to the bowl. She goes, you know, the only reason I got this bowl was to give it away. It's quite a pretty bowl. I say, are you sure you want to give it away? Yes. And it was like this flow of energy throughout. And this is what happens when you get a group of people focused, focused. And that's why you know Jesus says, where two or more three or more are gathered together in my name, in my name, I am there too. And what he's talking about, his name, what is his name? What did he teach us? Love. Correct. How would they know you as one of my disciples? What was his words? Because you love one another. Love one another. You, when you, the way you love one another. They're so clear. So clear. So simple. But then we live in this life and we get so involved in I and how dare you do this to me and I am in this pain, I am suffering, I, we live in this life where we do that. What can we do? We're human. And this is why Sri Patanjali tells us these things are going to happen. And he gives us the four locks and keys. And what does he say? Compassion towards the unhappy. unhappy. So when you're unhappy, what you, you give yourself? Compassion. Compassion, not anger. Why am I feeling like this? Or oh, poor me, victim. No, 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 no. Compassion. I'm really. So, how can you give yourself compassion? Difficult thing to give yourself compassion. Not difficult. Be gentle, honestly. Say. I will be gentle with myself. I must love myself. I am a child. There's no more barriers. 
right? There are no more barriers at that point. We are joining in Lord Jesus or Buddha or Krishna or whatever you want to call it. We are joining in that one energy. And of course, the more of us join in the energy, what happens to the space of that energy? It grows. But the moment selfishness comes in, then you contract. Because the only reason why you are selfish is, if you look at it, is you think you're never going to have enough. You think you want more. You think you can't be happy. That's selfishness. Because you don't have the faith. You don't have the faith, the absolute belief that you are totally looked after and your heart is on us. So you become selfish because I have to, I have to look after me. I have to look after me. So I have a right to be selfish. Right, Melanie? <laughs> Not like that. You have a right to love yourself, yes. You have a right to be happy, yes. But not, I have a right to be selfish. Can you see what happens with the body already? You're so stressed up in the selfishness. Because you haven't, you've just missed the point. You've just gone kind of a little haywire. So balance yourself. What, what kind of selfishness am I talking about? What will really make me happy? Long term. If you're happy yourself long term, then even if unhappiness comes, you cannot take it away. And that's the grace, that's the grace, that's the grace. And aren't we lucky, all of us in this room, all of us in this room, please remember how blessed you are to even want to touch it. Don't you think that's great now? Don't you think that's just such grace enough that you want to be enjoying this? How many people go through life with just like, I call it a living hell. Some of the lives that I see, for me, I you know, go into some business offices and um, see certain people and they're just like in a world, a totally different world of materialism, stress, I, 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 and the eyes are like this, yes, and this is the only way you do business, you know, do you make use of it? <laughs> and they say they're happy, and you look at all the lines here, you know, I mean, I'm sure you must have seen it. You convincing me you're happy, fine, keep on convincing yourself. I don't see an ounce of peace in you, but if you want to think you're peaceful, fine, but me, I'm not here to convince you that I don't want that. I know I don't want that. I know what I want very clearly. That's why I said to you, make it very clear to yourself. Otherwise, you know, we can be easily led, as Sri Patanjali says, we can easily led, thinking other things, you know, can make us happy. You know, oh, if I see a fortune teller, then at least I know what's happening in the future, then I won't be miserable. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Don't get addicted. I can't make a decision. I have to speak to my psychic before I make a decision. What, have you lost your own ability to make decisions? I can't you make a decision? Do you know I know many people like that? They can't make their own decisions anymore. I said, well, if you are happy with somebody overtaking your mind and deciding for you, fine. I love independence. <coughs> <coughs> I love to be free. I mean, the whole yogi path is moksha, which means freedom. Mm -hmm. Jivan mokta, a soul born to be free. The whole of the teachings of Buddha is freedom from attachments. You want me to get somebody else to tell me what I should think or breathe or how I should live? I have. Mm -hmm. That's the gift. That's the wonderful free choice that God gave me learn about God. Am I going to give it away? And this is when we become away from grace, when we give away the power that we were so graciously given, the power of love, the song, you know, the power of love. It's really a power. We have it. You can shift many things with love. I love Sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's beautiful, but unconditional love accepts the pain and accepts the beauty. That's, that's the training.
that's the training we are doing in these these talks every week training 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 the mind to see the truth and to take away the debris and see the clear light take away the debris the light is already there in you there's nobody that can give it to you already look at all the scriptures they'll tell you that don't listen to me don't trust me and don't believe me check it out all the scriptures will tell you it's already in you what's covering it fear Fear of seeing your own light. Why? Because the moment you do, you have to be responsible. Mm -hmm. You have to be responsible for everything you do. You bear no blame to anyone anymore. And it's too convenient to bear blame to God, life, everybody else for your sorrows. It's too convenient. I'm unhappy because of this one. I'm unhappy because of that. Convenient. <coughs> I'm unhappy because this is what I am. I need to change my ways. I want to be happy, then I do it like this. Not blame anywhere outside. And that's the responsibility that you take on. So many people are fearful of this responsibility. But at the same time, that is our greatest strength. So the more we resist that, the more we escape God's grace. The more we look and face our responsibility and face our grace and face our light, the more we receive, the more you will receive. And it's difficult sometimes because you're fighting against yourself. You know, one that wants it the easy way. You know, the, the Bhagavad Gita says, what is... Um, Poison in the beginning is nectar in the end. What is nectar in the beginning is poison in the end. So when you first feel your the light coming from you, it's a responsibility. It can be a bit painful, a bit scary, a bit frightening to move beyond your box. It is frightening. And many people stop at that point. They give up. It's too scary. But if you keep on that search for that light within you, then it'll be total pleasure in the end. When you give up too soon, you will always be frustrated with yourself. You will always end up frustrated. So might as well face the pain once and for all and get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's worth it. So, <clears throat> are there any questions? Is there anything you want to ask me? Anything you want to say? Anything you want to add? I'd love to hear. So on that note, we will end the class. We have um, a very special evening. I, I, I end it because I'll tell you I'm going to Italy tomorrow morning uh, at 8 o'clock. Can I have